This film is about uh, some of the things we did at Wilkes ba Station, Antarctica during 1958 as part of Operation Deep Freeze and the International Geophysical Year. at Quonset Point, Rhode Island. After leaving Panama, we sailed through the sometimes stormy South Pacific to Christchurch, New Zealand. After a one-week stay on the beautiful South Island, the Arneb continued southward through the Antarctic Convergence into the South Polar Sea. Upon reaching the cold waters of Antarctica, we made contact with an icebreaker which escorted us through the pack ice and around icebergs. A helicopter was used for ice reconnaissance in search for the best path through the changing sea ice conditions. Iceberg on the starboard side. Our first stop was the Cape Hallett Station for a crew exchange and resupply. We were given a mixed greeting by the 150,000 Adelie penguins and uh, the predator Skua. Leaving Cape Hallett, the Arneb sailed 1,800 miles, mostly west, to the Bud Coast, located some 2,400 miles due south of Perth, Australia. The icebreakers, Burton Island and Atka, led the way through the thick pack ice. ton Arneb could not maneuver as well as the icebreakers and hit some flows head on. It had a reinforced hull but still took some damage to a seam just below the waterline. The leak was minimal.
58, 300 yards from the shore. Offloading the ship was accomplished by standard Navy landing craft. For the crew, it was over the side and a scramble down the landing nets into the LST. Penguins are excellent swimmers, but out of the water they walk with an awkward waddle, or when smooth snow is available, they slide on their bellies as they push along with their feet. This sedalia is returning to its rookery on Clark Island in late September, the beginning of spring. Nest building is a raucous event, with penguins taking pebbles from others' nest. Each penguin has its own personality, ranging from shy to friendly to aggressive. In the background are the antenna towers at the base. Chick feeding can be a wild affair. We spotted two emperor penguins on Browning Island. The waist-high birds pose majestically for Dick Robertson. One of the sled dogs broke its tether and resorted to its instincts.
It looks bad for the daily, but it wins its freedom, and the husky was returned to its pen. Dick surveys the sea ice structure and finds time to make a new friend. Meanwhile, Mother Seal is busy keeping the sea access hole open for feeding. They have no natural enemies on the ice. These elephant seals have found a nice spot on Browning Island to bask in the sun. Dean Dennison joins in the fun. John Holland trains his crew for man hauling as an emergency tactic. Here, Casey Crock and Dick Robertson get help from Dave Ayers while Ollie Amundsen hitches a ride. The expedition crew gets ready for the inland traverse, a 200 mile trek looking for glacial and geologic features.
expedition moves through the storage depot and antenna farm. With Dave Ayers at the steering, we ride the frozen lakes of Clark Island in a World War II weasel. Windswept lakes are nearly ideal for a good round of ice skating. Will Tressler, base science leader, leads the way for John Zimmerman and Dave Ayers. We bought the ice skates in New Zealand when we heard about the lakes from the 1957 Wilkes crew. Wilkes Space is near the Antarctic Circle, making the shortest day of the year a couple of hours of twilight. We celebrate June 21st with a volleyball game. It's a slippery slope from the islands to the ice cap. The Antarctic ice cap reaches a thickness and elevation of some 5,000 feet, just 10 miles from the sea. The icy slope near the moraine makes for some tricky skiing for Don Edmund. Note the good view of the Windmill Islands and Vincennes Bay. Ski Linsky, a CB chief, and Father Birkenhauer, Catholic priest and seismologist, join enjoy a jaunt to a cairn 
left by a Russian expedition some years earlier. to the ice cliff, giving us some idea of the height. I think it was about 80 or 90 feet. America's great pastime in Antarctica. It's a long way from the North Pole, but Santa is guided by Father Birkenhauer to a grateful crew of scraggly ice rats. Fifty miles from the coast, Seb Morello does a little doorstep cleaning at the Site 2 Glaciology and Weather Station. The, the relief party for Site 2 was held up by blowing snow. On many days, the wind kicks up loose snow, cutting visibility to less than 200 yards at eye level. Fifty miles from the coast, Seb Borello does a little doorstep cleaning at the Site 2 Glaciology and Weather Station. The, the relief party for Site 2 was held up by blowing snow. On many days the wind kicks up loose snow, cutting visibility to less than 200 yards at eye level. Above 10 feet, it is still clear, but it is difficult to see the used oil drums marking the trail. Clear weather was needed for travel in the days before the global positioning satellites. The station sits on 5,000 feet of ice and consists of one Quonset or Jamesway hut, a connecting tunnel complete with electrical power generator a 30-meter glaciology pit, food storage in the compacted snow tunnel, and a toilet seat. The surroundings at S2 are more typical of the Antarctic continent with a nearly flat surface of compacted snow on ice up to two miles thick. This clear view to the horizon 
shows what most of Antarctica looks like. Chief Linsky and others converted a double-ended whaling boat into a motor boat. Holly Amundsen is at the helm for a cruise on Vincennes Bay. Bill Tressler leads the way for a cold swim in early summer. The very next day, a blizzard reminds us of where we are. With mild weather and temperatures above 30 degrees Fahrenheit, the digging out operation is in full swing using the D4 tractor and scoop. The snows are almost always wind driven and large accumulation only takes place around obstacles like buildings and large rocks. Linsky seals a few leaks in the roof panels of our prefabricated buildings. Dick Robertson and Seb Borello make an ice pit near the moraine so Dick can figure out how the ice is moving.
John Holland breaks a few rocks on Browning Island for nuclear dating. The Australians arrive in a Danish ship. This is the first human contact with outsiders for just over 12 months. The Aussies brought an uh, old World War II duck for amphibious operation. During the uh, cold season, we used a snow melter to make water. In warmer weather, the sea bees pumped water from the frozen lakes into two 400 gallon tanks. The Australian airplane takes a reconnaissance flight. Notice the extent of the glacial moraine in the background. The American Navy arrives in the icebreaker Burton Island. Wilkes Base is officially turned over to Australia. Of course, the Navy went full dress. So they are happy to be leaving. And the commander Bob Sparks does the honors for the United States. We departed the first week of February in 
way to Melbourne, Australia. I, for one, look back with fond memories, the experience of Antarctica's beauty and power for a whole year is good for a lifetime of reflections. Living and working with 27 other men in what I would call cultural isolation was smoothed to a great extent by our mentors Will Tressler and Henry Birkenhauer. Base Commander Bob Sparks sought and got immense uh, cooperation and leadership from the experienced Chief Petty Officers Jim Linsky, John Drew, and Russell Griffith. We all shared in the cleanup duties and fire watch and a lot else and got through the year with no serious conflicts. As I speak, it is now 1996. It is still possible after 38 years to look at this film and think it was almost yesterday. <laughs>